Welcome to the Freeland Writer's Eye Spotlight Talks for YouTube. Before we begin, I encourage you to use these videos interactively. When you are prompted to observe, pause the video and look carefully. When the educator asks a question, feel free to pause the video again and discuss your observations and ideas, making sure to address what you see that makes you say that. We're excited to share these videos with you and read your Writer's Eye entries. Enjoy! Let's start by taking a close, slow look at this untitled shadow box by Joseph Cornell. While different from seeing the work in person, we'll do our best to examine each side of the box, inside and out. First, look at the inside. Notice the background. Then, observe the walls on each side. Let your eye wander into all four corners of the box. Focus your attention on the first thing that stands out to you, then take note of the smaller details. Last, let's take a look at this detail on the back of the shadow box. What do you notice? Did anything surprise you? What were your first impressions of this artwork? How did your thinking change as you took the time to look more closely? What questions do you have about the materials used in this work? A lot of them might seem like objects you see in your day-to-day -day life, like newspapers or the pages of a book. Joseph Cornell was a master of what we call assemblage art, where artists would use objects in unexpected ways to give them new meaning. There are many hard-to-read words in the background of this work that actually came from a French textbook. You may have also noticed the two larger ones boldly pasted on the inside of the box. Why do you think Joseph Cornell chose to display the words grand and hotel so clearly in this artwork? What might they be suggesting? A lot of people compare this particular shadow box to a bird cage. What do you think it might mean for the bird that seemingly belongs inside of this cage to be shown on the outside of the box? Despite being an active participant in the international art world and a big fan of French artists, Joseph Cornell never traveled outside of the United States. Instead, he chose to spend his time with his mother and his brother Robert, who had cerebral palsy. Joseph Cornell was very family-oriented, especially after the death of his father when he was very young. He lived with his mother and brother in a home in New York City, where he created a basement studio for him to store all of his materials for work on collages and shadow boxes. Through the creation of different contained worlds that evoked elements of real-life places, Joseph Cornell was seeking a means of escape or travel. When I see a bird, I think of its seemingly limitless freedom, but I'm curious why Cornell, playing with these ideas, created a shadow of the bird that remains inside of the box. What do you think this detail might represent? This work never officially received the title from the artist. However, based on the contents of it, it unofficially goes by the name Black Cockatoo Silhouette, and is part of a series made by Cornell inspired by the Spanish artist Juan Gris. After seeing the painting The Man at the Café by Juan Gris, Joseph Cornell would go on to make 18 boxes that use similar visual elements to the work. Each of these boxes contained a white cockatoo shown in different ways. Seeing the work of another artist was enough motivation for Cornell to create something meaningful on his own, and I would love for you to take time to think about how this work might inspire your own writing. Maybe like Cornell, you're inspired less by the work as a whole and more by specific elements. We're so excited to see the creative ways you find to implement the images, ideas, or messages of this work in your submissions. Cornell was also an active supporter of other art forms. He frequented the opera and was a contributor to a dance magazine in New York City. After his death, a foundation was created in honor of him and his brother that is currently a big supporter of the Freilin. Through these means and by creating his own artwork, Cornell hoped to make people appreciate human creativity as a whole and always work to inspire others through this. In fact, Cornell believed that children would often have the easiest time accepting and appreciating his shadow boxes. In one of his final exhibitions in 1972, Cornell worked with the Cooper Union Department of Art and Architectural History to host a space for children from public and private schools in New York to visit. All of the works that he showed were displayed at eye level, around three feet off the ground, Instead of champagne and otherwise refined snacks, cherry soda and brownies were served. 
Cornell wanted to inspire people of all generations to have an appreciation of art and the humanities as a whole. The humanities are a field of study that covers the arts, history, philosophy, and most subjects outside of science and math. What connections can you draw between this work and other subjects that interest you? Think about the different references and materials in this work and how they signify different elements of Joseph Cornell's life. While you're preparing to create a story or poem inspired by this fantastic work of art, I would like to leave you with some last questions. If you could tell any story that you wanted with a box the same size as this one, what story would you tell? What objects would you display to help tell it? And how might those objects speak to one another? Thank you so much for joining me as we took a closer look at Joseph Cornell's Black Cockatoo Silhouette Shadow Box. Please come visit the Fraylin if you have the chance to see the work in person. We would love to see you. We hope you've enjoyed this Writer's Eye Spotlight Talk. Please reach out to the Education Department with any questions or feedback. Our email is museumoutreach at virginia.edu. Thank you.